Okay, you may have seen the speed painting video of Topo Mabi, so what I thought I'd do is just guide you through some of what I did in that video. So the first thing I do when I'm working with raw files is I choose not to apply the standard tone curve, and this gives me more latitude or more room to work the tones. Now to access this option you need to have an image open and we can go to the document menu up here and tap assistant and then below you'll find raw tone curve and I have this set to take no action. By default it's set to apply a tone curve so I just need to make sure that is set to take no action and what I'll do then is return to the home screen, um, add a new document and I'm going to import my raw file from cloud. So on the iCloud drive here, I'll just find my raw file. There it is. Just tap it to open it. And as you can see from the metadata up here, this photo was taken on a Panasonic GH2, which is not renowned for its amazing dynamic range. And indeed, from a cursory glance, we would think, oh dear, that highlight detail is horrifically blown out. But as we chose not to apply the tone curve, so all we're seeing is the gamma corrected image. We can drag the highlights right down and there is actually a fair amount of detail hiding there. Okay, so when I'm working with raw files in photo, what I generally tend to do is try and achieve a flat-ish look in the develop persona, which is where you develop the raw file, and then I go on to do further work in the main photo persona. So what I'll do here is move across to the Tones Studio and I'm just going to add a couple of nodes. Uh, the goal here is just to boost these shadow tones a little bit and end up with a fairly flat result that I can take forward. Okay, so I'll go ahead and tap Develop down here. Then of course the first step is to inpaint out the little car over here. So I'm just pinching to zoom all the way in and I'm going to select the inpainting brush that's located on the tools here. So if I select the clone brush, tap it again to open the fly out, I can then select inpainting brush and I'll just pinch in even further actually and reduce the width a little bit. Now this pretty much went right first time in the video, sometimes we might need to experiment and do a bit more work. Hopefully it will go right first time. So I'll just paint over the areas I want to get rid of and release. Okay, not too bad a job. I'll just single tap certain areas to try and get the inpainting brush to fill a bit more of the gates rails in, like so. Okay, that will do. It's very small background detail anyway, so I'm not too fussed just for the purposes of this demonstration. So next thing I did was I added a black and white adjustment with a luminosity blend mode. Now it's quite useful this technique because it allows you to control specific tones in the image. So if I open up the adjustment studio, add a black and white adjustment, then I move across to the layers studio and tap the more icon. We can tap here and change the blend mode to luminosity. Okay. So as I've just said, what this gives us is individual control over all these tones down here. So for example, I can drag reds to the right to intensify the luminosity of the red tones. I can do the same to yellow. So I can tap, drag, bring those up. I could perhaps back the greens off a little bit down here where you see the grass and I'll also do the same and back off the cyan and blue tones. Okay, so the next step is to add a kind of intermediary tonal adjustment and I'll go across to the adjustment studio, find curves, tap to add it and on the spline graph here what I want to do is create a node about here and just crunch the darker tones a little bit, add another node and just bring it about here. And this sets me up nicely for dodging and burning. Now I prefer to dodge and burn non-destructively, 
So the way to achieve this is on the Layers Studio here. I'll tap the New icon and choose New Pixel Layer. Then I want to fill this layer with 50% grey. So to do this, we move across to the Filters Studio, find our way down, F, 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 Fill, there we go. All right, and on the Color, we can tap here, and we have various color picking options. So I'll tap Color Wheel, and I can change that to Gray Sliders. And what I can do is drag Gray down to 50% to get an exact 50% grey fill. Tap, apply, and then on the Layers Studio once again, we'll tap the More icon and change the Blend Mode here to Overlay. All right, so what we can now start doing is I can, for example, choose the Burn Brush here. Just tap it again to access the Flyout. Pick up the Dodge Brush. It's going to use a much higher brush width. I want to target highlights for the range. Uh, opacity, let's try about 20%. And then I'm just going to drag over the building. So instantly we can see the dodging in effect. And what I did in the video was I also just dodged a bit of the foreground grass here. OK, and I'm deviating a bit. I didn't do this in the video, but I might go over and add a second layer of dodging. Just here and on the grass, like so. And then I want to burn other areas. So I'll tap the Dodge Brush tool to get to the flyout, select the Burn Brush, and for range, I want to select Shadows. Leave the opacity at about 20%. And I'm just going to tap, drag on the canvas with two fingers to enable panning. Just to clear the area here so I can get a better idea or a better view of the corner of this image. And I'm going to burn this side of the grass. OK, then tap, drag with two fingers once again to get over to the right here and I'm just going to burn this area of the building, like so. And again, I'm deviating from the video slightly, but I might go over with a second coat, as it were, just on the very edges. OK. So with the dodging and burning in place, what I'll then do is go across to the Adjustment Studio again, find Brightness and Contrast, and tap to add that. And I'll boost the brightness slightly, and then severely boost the contrast. I believe it was about 60% in the video. OK, and then it's time to really start to bring out the colour in the image. So again, on the Adjustment Studio, I'll find my way down to HSL Adjust, Hue Saturation Lightness, and this adjustment allows us to target Again, like the black and white adjustment, different colour tones. So on range here, I can choose reds. And I'm going to drag the red saturation up to about 40% or thereabouts. Again, change the range to yellow. Do the same with the yellow, so drag saturation up, like so. I actually went to 40 in the video, but it seems a bit too intense here, probably because I did some extra dodging and burning. Again, I'll move across to greens and do the same, so bring the saturation of the greens up. Then, across to cyans, I'm going to drag them all the way to the left, minus 100, and just keep an eye on the sky tones here. Again, I'll move across to blues, and do the same thing, I'll drag saturation to the left to desaturate the sky. So the idea here is to focus the viewer's attention on the actual building, rather than the rich colours of the sky. OK, so the final thing I did was I moved back up to master for the range, and I did a slight hue shift. So again, rather than just dragging left or right 
to get the value you want. You can also just single tap on an option and you'll get a little calculator interface which is quite handy because it allows me to punch in the exact value I want. I'm going to go for 4 and tap off to apply it and that just produces a slight reddish tone. Okay, I'm beginning to regret doing that extra dodging and burning now because for me the brickwork and the grass are now too intense. But, and I'm just improvising here, I'll go back over to the Layers Studio, select that pixel layer which contains the dodge and burn information, tap the More icon, and I'm just going to bring the opacity down slightly. So rather than messing about with the dodge and burn brushes, trying to burn some of the highlight dodging and vice versa, I can just tweak the opacity of the layer instead, which is quite handy. Alright, so next up is tone mapping. Now the reason I use the tone mapping persona is because it's got a fantastic local contrast feature. So we need to make sure we tap and select the pixel background layer here. Then on the top here we just simply move across to the tone mapping persona. Okay, and the first thing we do is grab tone compression and bring that all the way down because we're not using that at all. And local contrast, we'll see, is quite dramatic at higher values, but we only need a tiny bit. I added about 10%. I'm going to go to about 15 for this example, and that will do. So then we tap Apply. OK, and we're nearly done. The final step was to add some fine detail sharpening. And again, I prefer to do this non-destructively. So one way to do it, there are many ways, is to access the Layers Studio again. Make sure we have the pixel background layer selected. Then across on the Filters Studio, we could use Unsharp Mask. That's probably a better approach, to be honest but I'm stuck in my ways and I like to use High Pass. Okay, so on High Pass, again I'm going to tap Radius down here and choose one pixel. Tap Monochrome. And then I'm going to tap the little Thunderbolt icon here, which will convert it to a live filter layer. You'll get a performance warning, that's fine. Tap Yes. Then across on the Layers Studio, we'll see it's nested. If we just double tap the pixel layer, it's nested the high pass live filter layer into our pixel background layer. So to finally achieve the sharpening effect, we need to tweak the blend mode on this high pass layer. So making sure it's selected, I can tap more up here. And all I need to do is change the blend mode from normal to linear light. And there we go. And if I pinch to zoom in, we can see the sharpening effect. Again, I can just hide this layer by tapping the little check icon next to it, and we can see the effect it has. OK. And in the video, I went ahead and I double tapped the high pass filter layer, and I brought the radius down slightly, so just to follow along with that, I'll tap Radius again and type 0.8 just to reduce the overall sharpening effect. And there we go. Now, I have missed out a step. In the video, I did add a color balance adjustment, but upon reflection, I decided it was unnecessary and it didn't actually add that much to the overall tonal result of the image. So I also briefly showed off Photos History Studio, and I will do that again. Across on the History Studio here, what we have is a complete undo history. So you can scrub all the way back to the beginning of the image. And then, of course, we can scrub all the way back to the end to see our final result. And that is that. I hope that's given you some ideas for your own image editing. Thank you for watching.